Okay, so we're going to use the nth term to generate sequences. And as a quick reminder, the value of n represents the position in the sequence. So we're going to do a non-calculator method, and then we're going to do a calculator method. And I'm going to teach you about this table mode in case you don't already know about it. So reminder is that n is the position, and we want to find the first four and the tenth term of the following sequences. So I'm going to do a non-calculator method for this first one. I want to find the first four terms. Well, the first term is when n is equal to 1. So I'm going to substitute 1 into this expression. So it's going to be 1 squared plus 3 times 1 plus 2. Well, that's 1 plus 3 plus 2, which is 6. The next one is going to be when n is equal to 2. So that's just 2 squared plus 3 times 2 plus 2. So that is going to be 4 plus 6 plus 2. That's 12. We'll do n is 3, so that's 3 squared plus 3 times 3 plus 2. I'm just subbing n as 3 this time. That's 9 plus 9 plus 2. That is 20. When n is equal to 4, it's going to be 4 squared plus 3 times 4 plus 2. So that's 16 plus 12 plus 2. That's 16 plus 14. That is 30. And actually, you can see it's a quadratic because it's going up 6. 8, 10, and 6, 8, 10 means the second difference would be 2, 2, and 2. So all I need to do now is the extra one. I'm going to just squeeze it in up here. If n is equal to 10, it would be 10 squared plus 3 times 10 plus 2. Well, that's 100 plus 30 plus 2. That's 132. So now I'm going to show you the calculator mode for this one, how we're going to try and come up with 2n squared minus 5n plus 3. I'm going to do it in table mode. And then you're going to have a go at doing these two down here. You can do some non-calculator on calculator, but I'm just going to confirm the answers by doing them on calculator. OK, so I'm just going to switch to my camera so I can show you my calculator that I've got here. Now, pretty much all calculators are going to have this setting that we've got here. OK. So the first thing that you're going to do on your calculator is you'll switch it on. Mine is actually already in table mode, but I'm going to put it back in the normal mode for a second. So I want you to go to your calculator and see if you can find table mode. It might be under mode. Um, in this one, it happens to be under menu, but on other calculators, you press mode and then there'll be an option to say table. So I'm going to hit menu here and I'm going to scroll until I find the one that says table, which happens to be number nine. If it comes up on your calculator with just like a one or a two or a three, you can literally just press the number on the calculator and it will take you there. So I'm going to press uh, table, which is number nine. Then it gives you this option of f of x that you have here, and it literally just wants you to type in the function and I'm going to type in this function. My function is in terms of n at the moment, so I'm going to want to type it in so that it's in terms of x, because that's what the calculator is going to understand. Don't worry about what f of x means, it just means it's the function. Now, to type this in, I'm going to use the alpha button to come up with the x part, and then I'm going to talk about these things in just a second. So I'm going to try and type in 2x squared minus 5x plus 3. So I'm going to press 2. Now, you can see there's this little red x above the bracket, so I'm going to press alpha and x. And that's going to be 2x squared minus 5 alpha to get the x plus 3. Now, to go to the next part, you just press equals, and it's going to give us these options of start, end, and step. Sometimes when you press equals, it will give you an option to do g of x as well, which just allows you to do two functions on the calculator at once. If it comes up with g of x and you don't want to do that, just press equals again, and it will just take you through to the next part. But I've turned that setting off in my calculator. So the start range that I want to do, it's going to tell me where am I going to start substituting in values and where am I going to end? Well, I wanted to do the first four terms, but I also wanted to find the tenth term. So I'm going to start it at one because I want to sub in n equals one. And I'm actually going to go all the way up to 10. So I'm going to change the end to 10. If you have this on your calculator where you can't see all three at once, you can just type in one of them and press equals, another one and then press equals, etc. And for the step, that just means what it's going to be going up in. Well, I want it to go up like one, two, three, four, five. So each time it steps up, I want it to step up by one. So all I need to do now is just hit equals and the calculator is going to do all that substituting for me. So when n is equal to one or when x is equal to one, the first thing in the sequence is going to be a zero then a 1, then a 6, and then a 15. Now that's going to keep going, because I wanted to go all the way up to the 10th term. 
the tenth term is actually going to be 153. So the tenth term will be 153, but this is the start of this sequence that we've got here. Now we can just check to see if one of them, if it makes sense. So if n is equal to 1, you would have 2 times 1 squared minus 5 times 1 plus 3. So that's 2 minus 5 plus 3. Yep, it is equal to 0. And even with the tenth one, we can check it works. 2 times 10 squared, that's 200 minus 50, that's 150, plus 3 is 153. So I want you to try these two here. I'm going to just do them on my calculator. Maybe you do this one non-calculator and this one calculator. So to go back to do another one, just press equals, or maybe you don't. Maybe you just press menu and then you go back to table by pressing 9. There we go. Now we can clear it again. So instead of doing n squared, I'm going to do x squared minus 2 x. I still want it to go between 1 and 10. And so the first four numbers of this one are minus 1, 0, 3, and 8. And the tenth one, if I scroll down, is 80. And then for the last one that we're going to do, when we go back to table mode, we're going to do 3x squared plus x minus 5. Again, I want it to go between 1 and 10 so I can get all the values that I need. And so the sequence is going to be minus 1, 9, 25, 47. And the tenth one, as I scroll down, is going to be 305. And the tenth one is 305. So I'm going to just jump back to good notes for a second. I'm going to write these in so that you have them on the slides. And then in the next video, we're going to think about how you find the nth term. So hopefully that stuff on the calculator has been useful for you. Found this video helpful? Then why not drop it a like and consider subscribing to my channel. If you'd like the next video in the playlist, you can click here to be taken straight to it. And as always, wishing you the very best for all your studies.